Thank you, Gabe. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, pleasure to actually be in a room of people for a change. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Um, thanks for, uh, to the organizers, to Gabe and the whole team for just a, an opportunity to share a few words with you guys. Um, yeah, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, an overview on how to run what we call your favorite open source database, which is Postgres at enterprise scale. Thank you. I was looking for the clicker. I appreciate it. Thanks for buying that. <laughs> Good. Okay. So um, just very briefly about me. So um, I joined EDB just about a year ago. Prior to that, I worked in the industry for many, many years. I worked in, in UBS for a long, long time. Um, done a whole bunch of roles in tech over that period of time, and then ended up in the database space, introducing, uh, setting an open source agenda and introducing Postgres to my previous employer, and then building a kind of private and public cloud implementations of that, that database. Uh, made lots of mistakes along the way, learned lots of things, hopefully some things that we can share with you guys as, as we go through the course of the day. Um, who is EDB? EDB is Enterprise Database. We are, the short version of EDB is we are to Postgres what Red Hat is to Linux. So we, we are the, the single largest contributor to the open source project, both from a code perspective, but also just from a community perspective. Our teams run um, Postgres user groups all over the world. We do lots of education events. Our, our goal in life is to, to expand the footprint of Postgres and for financial services companies to enable folks to do that at scale, to do that efficiently, reliably, and securely. Um, so Postgres support is our business. That's what we do. We're the guys you call whenever things go bang in the middle of the night. Um, we, in that pursuit of enabling kind of larger companies and financial services companies to, to run Postgres at, at true enterprise levels, we have a whole kind of ecosystem of tools, some open source, some proprietary, that we can then deploy along with decades of expertise in Postgres to help you guys get to the next level. So. The rise of open source software is pretty obvious, I think, to everyone in this room. That's, that's not something that's new. But what is perhaps interesting for you guys is we, what we've identified is we're pretty much at a tipping point right now where the usage of open source databases is just about superseding the, the, the use of kind of traditional, more traditional proprietary databases, which is very exciting for us as a Postgres provider. Um, Postgres always comes out as kind of up in the, the top in terms of most wanted, most loved database. Um, I think there's a number of different reasons for that. Cost is certainly one. I think Gabe mentioned it earlier on. Cost is one. Uh, talent, attraction, and retention is another one we see a lot with a lot of our customers. People are interested to kind of leverage some of the, the newer tech. You can guarantee that anyone that's just come out of college hasn't been developing on a, an Oracle or a Sybase or DB2. They've been working on open source technology, so, so that's almost second nature to, to, to folks. Um, the other big thing that I think attracts people to, to Postgres is portability. So breaking that kind of vendor locking, giving yourselves the flexibility to um, Optimize your commercial agreement, optimize the, the, the level of technical expertise you get from a, from a provider. And if you decide to, to switch from one to the other, it's largely a paper exercise, which is significantly different. If you're on a proprietary database and you want to move somewhere, you're typically going to impact your entire application estate and, and require lots of extra development work. So with that, while we all love Postgres, and Postgres is great, spoiler alert, it's not that easy just to run vanilla Postgres at enterprise scale in financial services institutions. So we typically look at it in, in four, from four angles. Um, reliability is key. So I can guarantee most folks in this room are going to be running uh, in multiple locations at once, multiple data centers, availability zones, probably cross-region. You're going to need some degree of high availability. So one of the things that's really important is Make sure you understand what your SLAs are. Make sure that, you, um, and that you've got technical solutions to manage things like automated failover, whenever things break. Um, we have a whole bunch of tools. That's our, our business. We can talk about those offline. I won't bore you with the, the details just now. Um, performance, also critical. So I think there's a, a perception around Postgres that uh, Postgres is just for development or low tier applications. I have run it very successfully for mission critical applications, but to do that, you need to understand the ecosystem that you're, you're running your database in. You need to understand how to get the best out of your compute and storage infrastructure. So my advice there would be work with a partner who's willing to really understand your requirements and help you optimize that implementation. Um, scalability, again, my previous life, we ran in a state of around um, 15,000 databases. 
there is simply no way that you can deploy those manually and manage those manually. So orchestration and automation is absolutely critical. You need to be able to deploy these things uh, repeatably, reliably. You don't want to be in the situation where uh, it worked in UAT and it doesn't work in prod, and it's because the system administrator configured something different in the production instance. So really think about um, automa building automation, designing patterns that map to your, your SLAs, your, your recovery time objectives, et cetera, uh, and then automate the hell out of those at the back end. That's, that's the, the real key that we find for, for large-scale deployments. Other thing, sounds very obvious, but make sure you've got monitoring in place. You don't want your application teams to call you and say, hey, is my database down? You need to be ahead of that. You need to be proactive in that. You need to be in front of those things and making sure that you've got full visibility of your state. So we talked about Log4j before. So we all were running around like headless chickens this time last year on Log4j. You need the ability to have a view across your estate and understand, OK, well, I'm running a version 1.1 on these 1,000 databases. I need to upgrade those to 1.5 or whatever it happens to be. So having those kind of tools that aren't um, automatically part of the open source stack is, is important. I think uh, we find it's important to help our customers be able to operate at the scale that, that they would like to. Um, security. Financial services, no big surprise. This is kind of front and center. Um, everything from encryption, so encryption in transit to encryption at rest, um, those are critical. Um, data access is another key one. So understanding who's got access, having kind of control over your, your role-based access control models, being granular about who gets to see data, so exposure data on a, on a need-to-know basis. Those are things that we find kind of repeatedly um, that, are, that are very important to financial services institutions. And equally so, just on the right-hand side, I, I listed a bunch of those. So for any of you guys that operate in, in multinational environments, I can guarantee you will have your own internal control framework, which is the, the amalgam of, of the multiple regulators that I'm sure you're, you're facing off to. So things like strong authentication requirements, central identity management, um, Backup and restore backup integrity checking, disaster recovery checking, all of these types of things are key things that, that we understand. And again, if you want to deploy an open source database at, at scale, those are the kind of things you need to be aware of. You need to be building a kind of holistic database solution. So I think that my, my lasting message for, for the day is you probably, depending where you are on the Postgres journey, you're either beginning or you're running in dev and you want to scale up into a production environment or you want to move from lower tiered applications to, to mission critical applications, you probably have a multitude of questions. My overriding message is find a partner, find someone to work with who's done this before. So in my previous life, uh, we thought we were super smart and thought we could build everything ourselves, which we did, but it took us a long, long time to do it. So if I was doing it over again, I would absolutely go and uh, take a shortcut and find, find the partner who, who knows what they're doing. Um, Find someone who's willing to look at your, your database solution as more than just a database engine. Look at it as understanding the, the holistic database solution. So how do you make your database available to your developers? How do you improve their agility by improving provisioning times, ease of, of deployment, et cetera? How do you integrate with your identity and access management systems? How do you, lever how do you get the best out of your compute stack? Make sure you've got backup and monitoring, obviously. Um, make sure you train your operations staff. I've fallen into that trap where we built the most shiniest, beautiful uh, implementation. I think we had provisioning down to like four minutes from click of a button to, to running database. But we didn't train our operations staff well enough. So the problem was that when something, something went bang in the night, our ops guys didn't know, know the run books. They didn't know how to fix things. And as a result, our, our service got a bad reputation. So easily remediable. There's lots of companies who can, can help with training. Uh, we try to help with that stuff as well, of course. But that's a key one that isn't perhaps obvious, but something that we find very important. And then actually, the last one, make sure you've got some kind of patching and upgrade framework. We are. As an, or, as, a, as an industry, probably not well renowned for keeping on top of our um, end of life of, of software versions. So that's something I always encourage customers to kind of build in from, from the beginning. So yeah, we are here all day. We are just in the hallway outside. If anybody's got any additional questions, I'd be more than happy to talk to you guys in, in a little bit or a lot more detail. Um, but my message is, um, we love Postgres. Postgres is, is the lifeblood of our company. We are, we're trying to promote Postgres. But please get a partner, work with people who really know what they're doing to help you kind of move that forward and, and do that 
efficiently and safely. Thank you.